Casey Gray here from The Conscious Builder. And before we get into today's video, I wanna give a quick thank you to our sponsor, AeroSeal. For over 20 years, their goal has been to make the homes we build more comfortable. Whether you are aspiring for net zero or passive house certification or retrofitting a home, AeroSeal can meet your air sealing requirements. We have used them and continue to use them for both new homes and renovations. In today's video, we're gonna share what you need to know about designing your roof. We'll compare trusses versus rafters, which is essentially cutting and building everything to do with the roof on site. And we'll make sure that you understand what's required so that your roof meets your expectations. So we'll start with some general guidelines for designing your roof. So the higher the pitch on your roof, the more expensive it'll be. And that expense is coming from materials. There'll be more materials involved. And also, uh, it's a little bit harder to work on, so you're going to be having an increase in labor costs. Uh, that said, the lower the pitch, uh, the more chances you're going to have uh, problems with water leakage because if there's less of an opportunity for runoff. Every added hip and valley uh, is also work. Um, and in addition to that, like you, every valley is another chance for water to pool. The dormers look great, but can also be a lot of work. Uh, we did these three uh, recently on a house. The two on the side uh, are actually fake in the sense that they don't uh, open into the conditioned space. They just go right into the attic, but they were added just to provide uh, balance and scale across the front of the building. And they're also a popular choice for people uh, who maybe live in an older home with a smaller uh, uh, upstairs living space and they give you the opportunity to increase the headroom uh, and usable living space. A hip roof will require more trusses than a gable roof, but both are simple for framers who know what they're doing. Another added bonus with hip roofs is that they have level soffits, which eliminate any transitions around your gables or the need for building bird boxes. Uh, there are, and then there are more complicated gable versions, such as the Dutch and Clipped, and then the Mansard and Gambrel. Uh, the Gambrel is like your standard barn roof. So a bird box is basically a transition from the level soffit uh, around the side of the house up to the pitched gable. Uh, usually they're done in aluminum, um, but there are a variety of styles. Another option is to take what's called a dormer, an eyebrow dormer, and basically divide your wall in half so that the gable and the lower wall are, are separated by a small roof line. It's providing shade and uh, allowing for sun at optimal times of the year. So for example, in the summertime, we've got a higher angle of the sun. And so it's gonna prevent sunlight from going into the window uh, and door that are here. Uh, and then in the wintertime, when we've got a lower pitch, uh, it'll allow sun to come in and maximize uh, those solar gains. So the other advantage of the eyebrow is that it divides an otherwise monolithic wall into two sections and creates kind of like a transition break. Uh, so for example, here uh, we've got a plastered wall below and pine siding up above. So the shed roof is just uh, really just one rafter uh, connecting uh, over to the wall over here. Uh, this is uh, the utility room and an interior space, but we've just framed a, a temporary one here for right now until we can get the larger trusses that connect with the garage. This roof is divided into two sections. We've got a, a higher roof line over here on the west side uh, than the east, and that's for two reasons. One is that that section of the building extends uh, deeper that way, so the trusses just have to be larger to span the building. And the second is that it increases the total surface area on the roof uh, for solar panels. Uh, so that's something to think about as well when you're designing your roof. We're gonna go take a look upstairs and compare the differences between trusses and stick frame roofs. When it comes to new builds and customs, uh, trusses are, have become pretty much the standard. Uh, and that's usually for a few reasons. You're gonna save a lot uh, on labor costs because they they're don't take as long to install. Uh, they are over, overall more expensive, but they are designed to the plans uh, that, you know, that you're working from. That does mean that you can't modify them. Uh, these are engineered. Sometimes there is a little bit of cutting that goes on uh, on tails. Um, but any kind of serious modification would of course require uh, engineering. This one over here took us about three days uh, with about three of us working and uh, one person in a machine. 
So overall, your material cost for trusses is going to be more expensive, but in the end, you'll save uh, on labor because of the speed at which they can be installed, uh, and you'll be generating less waste because the trusses come uh, built to plan. Your roof contractor will get a truss package that will give you the truss name uh, and the layout as well as the quantities. For this roof, I think our lead time was about two to three weeks, but that's gonna vary depending on uh, your local truss manufacturers and how busy they are. Now, in terms of installing trusses, there are two options, sort of main options. Uh, one is a crane uh, and the other is a telehandler or boom lift. Uh, so for example, with a crane, uh, their like maneuverability is probably the best. Uh, you're able to kind of access all areas of a difficult site. Um, that being said, however, they are more expensive. For what they charge one day, you could get uh, you know, a lift for a week. But the idea is that it shows up uh, and on one day you get everything done. So if you think that that's something that is possible for your building, then, then cranes are a great option. Here we opted for using a telehandler lift because it was going to allow us to do a bit more uh, work throughout the week and the cost over the week just ended up working out a lot better. Um, they can be a bit trickier to use to install the trusses, especially if your site has difficult access. Um, but that's sort of a conversation you want to have uh, with your on-site carpenters and framers. I hope this video has helped you understand what's required when you're designing the roof for your project. Most of the projects that we do, do use trusses. However, there are new builds and renovations where rafters make sense. For example, this coach house and this second story addition over a garage, it made sense to build the roof on site. So using rafters. If you wanna learn more about AeroSeal and how you can incorporate it into your project, check out the link in the video description below. And if you're wondering how you can support the channel, simply liking or commenting on this video is a huge help, or even subscribing if you haven't already or sharing would be even better. But I am super grateful for you just tuning into this video, so thank you so much. Until next time, I'm Casey Gray, and remember to build consciously.